1564. Memorize this phone number. Be sure to pass it on to everyone around you because you could be saving a life. This is the number for Lebanon's first ever suicide prevention hotline, the Embrace Lifeline. And that's the subject of our episode for today. Welcome back, everyone. We're here today with a new episode of Beirut Buzz, Beirut.com's podcast that covers different stories and issues that are trending around the country. My name is Lama, and with me today are two guests I'm very happy to be speaking with. We're joined by Mira and Christine from Embrace. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. So, yes, as Lama said, hello, Lama. Uh, this is Christine and Mira with us. Um, Christine is in the Lifeline Supervisor uh, since um, six months now, and I've been uh, working with Embrace, volunteering with Embrace since uh, the very first day uh, back in 2013. And uh, as I said, I'm now the supervisor uh, on the hotline. I'm Mira. I'm an operator here at uh, Embrace. Uh, I've been here for almost uh, two years now. And um, so you guys are working as um, volunteers, right? And for the listeners who aren't sure, Embrace has been around for a few years. It's a support network for mental health in Lebanon and the Middle East. I'm not going to bore you with my own <laughs> projection of what they do. I'll have Mira and Christine put it much more eloquently. But um, uh, in talking about the lifeline, what the listeners should know is that it launched in 2018 as the first suicide prevention hotline in Lebanon. I, I also assume the region. Can, can you guys correct me on that? First in Lebanon and the region. And um, their volunteers undergo very rigorous training and suicide risk assessment training, I think it's believed. So I want to focus today on suicide prevention in our daily lives, as well as how the media should handle um, this topic as well as adjacent topics. So I'm going to open up the floor to um, Mira and Christine. I want to ask first, um, I think the question on everyone's mind right now during probably what's the most difficult time for Lebanon. In talking about mental health in Lebanon, people often juxtapose it with hunger. So it gets compared as though hunger is the ultimate struggle and then mental health and emotional struggles. I'm not sure is the right word. You guys can um, also guide me on that. But how do we get mental health the adequate attention it deserves when our basic rights are in the process of being stripped down? So first, thank you, Lama, for having us. Uh, so I want to start by saying that the right to a good health is part of basic human rights, right? And health is actually a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being combined. Hence, mental health is part of our basic rights. So giving mental health the adequate attention it deserves by spreading awareness about it and fighting the stigma around it. Once our people and eventually the government uh, are educated and convinced about the fact that there cannot be help without mental health, uh, only then we would understand that mental health and mental well-being is, again, actually part of our very basic uh, rights. I fully agree with you. I think that um, more often than not, we put so much emphasis on uh, physical ailments and we completely ignore as a society uh, anything that's mental or emotional when the reality is that studies show over and over that mental health is just as primary to leading a healthy life and a productive one and one that is fruitful as physical health. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if you guys could give us some insight or statistics about the mental health crises in Lebanon that have emerged throughout this economic recession? Uh, well, Lama, actually, I, I'm going to have to check because I'm, I don't have the numbers on me right now. Uh, if we can do that, if we have the time and... Okay, maybe we'll just um, 
put them as a post edit and we can include them in the description um, of this episode. Um, but did you find that um, obviously the quality of people's mental health deteriorated uh, during such a stressful time? Uh, did you see that reflected in the uh, while working on the hotline? Yes, definitely. Uh, numbers are pretty high lately. Actually, roughly, I can tell you that uh, we had extra uh, 150 or 160 calls uh, uh, this month compared to uh, last month. That's, wow. Yes, yes. So, uh, yes, definitely, uh, calls are um, are pretty uh, uh, high uh, in numbers uh, lately. Uh, yes, of course, um, because of a lot of um, factors, um, also because of what's going on in our country, unfortunately. Yeah, so there has been a drastic increase in, uh, in calls this year too, in comparison to, to last year. Yeah, I can't imagine it's been um, consistent because it seems like mm -hmm. things deteriorated so quickly. You know, we were hit with, uh, obviously, economic problems, political problems, COVID, everything that everybody knows. Is there, um, is there a particular uh, faction that you feel is calling more than others? Is it, have you guys been successful in reaching an older population? That's what we're working on, actually. We want to be reaching uh, really everyone, uh, uh, every, every person in need uh, of all ages, of all you know, nationalities. But yes, for now, um, our uh, callers age range varies between, uh, you know, uh, 15, 16 year olds to late, uh, I, I would say, 40s. Uh, we do have callers who are older and younger, but that's that's the bigger uh, population. population. Yes, but we are working on, you know, targeting uh, everyone, really everyone. And, and what kind of activations are you guys working on to kind of access that 50-year-old, uh, 60-year-old segment? Yeah, so basically uh, awareness sessions. So uh, also, uh, you know, social media, maybe, maybe not everyone or uh, not necessarily all uh, age ranges are active on social media. So we were recently you know uh checking with our uh, communications department about how we're gonna do so that we reach uh, uh the you know all older uh, population uh we do have uh, uh some ideas but uh yeah we'll keep that for uh later yeah i hope you guys will share them down the line um maybe uh, we can help out as the website or something thank you um, I'm wonder, I want to shift the conversation a little bit to, in speaking about this kind of older population, there is a disparity between the amount of awareness uh, amongst younger people is something like suicidal ideations is well discussed, I would say, maybe not to a perfect degree, but um, people have the heightened awareness to spot it, to know what it looks like. In older populations, at least in Lebanon, believe that no, maybe not in this way. That we know that if that this person is uh, loved or this person is on the fence about the intihar, or I'm not sure how to say suicidal ideations in Arabic. That this person has reached this stage. There are many people who say that they are upset or upset or something like that, and and it's classified in an interesting way. So how do you how do you propose that we can deal with individuals in our lives that we feel have become riddled with these kind of suicidal ideations, but who lack the awareness of knowing what they are feeling? Okay, so um, again, I want to remind uh, everyone about our slogan. Our slogan is "Talking saves lives" for a reason. So uh, the more we talk, the more we can help. Uh, come in, be it with uh, a teenager or a teenager or a teenager or a teenager. So it's not like... Um, so if you have a very wrong idea, you know, if, if a person is older, 
مش مش ضروري يكون عنده هوب او او يو نو ات نورمال انه يكون هوبليس هذا شيء مش مضبوط مثل ما مثل ما وقت نكون عم نحكي عن ميديكال بروبلمز يو نو حدا ممنوع يكون عم يتوجع لعمره 12 او لو عمره 85 كمان سايكولوجيكلي uh, ممنوع يكون عم يتوجع لو لو قد ما كان عمره سو سو هاو وي ابروتش هيك رح اقول ان جنرال ات از ريلي كل الاعمار So we want to tell people, you know, you want to uh, give your loved ones a safe place to vent. كمان ما بما انه لما جو بتصيري بغض النظر قد عمرهم اكيد اوكي اند فور ذيم تو توك اباوت يو نو وات ذير جوينغ ثرو يو وونت تو فاليديت ذير فيلينغز ريجاردليس اوف واتس كوزينغ ذيم دو نوت مينيمايز ذير ستريسرز نيفر دو ذات اي سو سو وي تان تو انو انو هي كان عمل كمبارزنز انه انت بشو عم تقطع شوف غيرك وقول الحمد لله انه انه مشاكلك اقل من مشاكل غيرك اتسترا وي تان تو دو ذات سو ذات ذات ذا لاست ثينغ وي وونت تو ذات وي دو نوت وونت تو دو ذات اكشولي اوكي سو سو كل حدا عنده ذير ستريسرز اند نو بادي هاز ذا رايت تو تو مينيمايز ذو ستريسرز سو Uh, those stressors. It is also uh, important, very important actually, to assess for uh, uh, for their safety, for this person's safety. How do I do that? I do not assume. Okay, so I ask. I normalize the question and I ask it directly, openly. Okay, uh, uh, are you thinking about suicide? Are you thinking about killing yourself? You do not give Uh, that person ideas about suicide by doing so. Uh, okay. Okay, so نحن بنفكر انه oh my god اذا سالني هذا السؤال بكون عم بالعربي عم بزرع له الفكره براسه. That's not true. That's a myth. Okay, you will be what you'll actually be doing is providing that person with the safe space uh, uh, they might be looking for. Uh, to talk to actually know that that there is someone uh, who's ready to listen to them and help them you might be providing them with uh, with uh, you know the help they are reaching out to uh, um, uh, these people are are not seeking attention kamena we tend to say that and no ambitranaj or or they 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 are uh, you know بدنا بدنا نغير هيدي الكلمة ونقول إنه if anything they are reaching out for help okay mm-hmm. you want to you want to listen to them uh, non judgmentally and the, the behaviors they are portraying seriously لأنه أوقات uh, uh, sometimes uh, بيكونوا عم يحكوا عن عن الموت عم بيكون صار عندهم you know أسئلة uh, uh, أكثر من العادة عن الموت شو بيصير إذا مات شو بيصير بعد الموت etc and also sometimes it is uh, all about behaviors بيصيروا عم بي, behaving in a, in a way that is not طبيعتهم uh, 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 إذا إذا بدك And very important something we need to know that they might be feeling is usually at least they they feel like it's interminable, intolerable, and unavoidable at that point in their life. You want to remind them that they are actually not okay. You want to remind them that what they want to end is that very pain and not their lives. You want to check up on them regularly, you know, make them feel like they're surrounded by people uh, they love, they're cared about, they're not feeling lonely. Definitely you want to encourage them to seek professional help or call, if needed, a kid, uh, or call the Embrace Lifeline, again, 1564, again, because talking saves lives. And you spoke a little bit about uh, behaviors and and how somebody's behaviors, يعني إذا منهم عم يتصرف على طبيعتهم مثل ما قلت فيها تكون clue as to uh, as to what they're going through or whether or not they've reached a, a point that's critical in their mental health. Uh, do you, do you have any? I don't want to use the word symptom, but um, do you have any signs that we can look out for in our loved ones, in our friends? of this kind of hopelessness that would maybe push us to go the extra step and and advise them to seek professional help if need be yes so uh, usually such people tend to try 
isolate from uh, everyone else. Uh, they might uh, stop enjoying the activities that they used to do and they used to enjoy. Uh, they might stop doing the activities. Uh, they might uh, not, uh, you know, through isolation, stop talking to their loved ones. They might you know, start taking a step back from, uh, from society mostly. That's one thing to, to look out for. Uh, some people might also start giving away uh, pre uh, precious uh, possessions, uh, maybe uh, something they, uh, they love. Uh, others might also uh, write, start writing uh, a will. And, and so say you pose the question, you open up the conversation, which is already a huge thing. I, 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 as we're having this conversation on the scenario, wherein somebody has become very withdrawn by asking them yes sometimes how do you keep from panicking how do you keep from making it worse obviously building on what Christine was saying about a kid validating a kid not saying no what what would be the next steps? Yes, it's definitely uh, hard for someone to be in uh, in such a position because it is a great responsibility. They don't have to carry it uh, alone. They can also they can always uh, call the lifeline and uh, seek help to help others. Okay, and is can you please remind the listeners about the operating hours of the lifeline? Yes, of course. So we operate from uh, 8 uh, a.m. till 5.30 a.m. And the calls are uh, completely anonymous, right? And not recorded or recorded for training? Yes, they're recorded for training and for quality assurance only. But no one uh, can listen to the calls. And if the caller wants, they can remain anonymous. Do you find that the hotline is busier at certain times, maybe at certain times of the year? We read a lot about um, suicide rates maybe spiking um, during holiday seasons because people are feeling more withdrawn, more alone. Uh, I'm wondering what sort of trends you've noticed um, on the hotline in Lebanon. Yeah, so the hotline is relatively busy all day. Um, but we usually receive calls from parents or older people uh, whose kids might be at school, uh, mostly in the morning, while uh, younger people or teachers call uh, later in the day. Uh, I would say that uh, we receive a good amount of calls uh, at night too, and maybe because it's uh, a convenient time for the callers, either because everyone around them is, uh, is asleep, so, so they have the comfort of, uh, of talking to us. But uh, we can update you in July when we start operating 24-7 about this issue. Oh, that's also exciting that you guys have managed to kind of push this. I remember when the hotline started, it had more limited operating hours now. I'm hearing you guys are expanding 21 hours and hopefully in the future 24 hours. So uh, kudos on all your hard work. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the disparity between uh, the rates of suicide amongst men versus women. I was reading and prepping for this episode that men are 3.5 times more likely to uh, commit suicide. Is this something that you have also noticed on the hotline? Okay, so um, it is actually uh, women who uh, try uh, committing suicide. Well, we don't really like to use the word committing, so that's what I'm trying to say is men actually have suicide uh, twice as okay. uh, much as, uh, uh, as females just because they use uh, Zabatic uh, harder uh, methods uh, okay. the uh, gunshots so okay. that, that's that's the only reason so so the method uh, they use is uh, you know uh, again we do not like to use this word but they succeed quote unquote uh, they die by suicide Actually, just uh, the the correction that you just uh, gave, I, I'm really particularly interested in. So, 
for the listeners who don't know, I've been running Beirut.com for around five years. And in these five years, we've tried to really keep up with the way to present stories in a in what is the most suitable way for our readers and in a way that is that builds up the community instead of uh, harms it. So one of the things we faced is in talking about issues of mental health and talking about suicide. So I remember around, I think it was two years ago or something, and we were running a story and the headline said, uh, commit suicide. And somebody wrote in the comment section, you guys really shouldn't use that. And all. it puts the onus on the person, on the victim and, and, it's better to shift the language to died by suicide. So since then, our headlines read died by suicide. And I'm wondering what other help us ensure that we as media are handling these topics of mental health adequately. For example, a big question that is always on the editorial um, board is do we mention the method in which, um, by which they died? Okay, so uh, we usually prefer not to, Lama. Um, okay. Uh, uh, again, we do not want to be, you know. Um, uh, so, so here is where where we where we say that we might be, you know, giving ideas to to people who are already uh, having suicidal thoughts uh, and struggling with those thoughts, you know. So uh, uh, we prefer. Uh, not to uh, mention uh, details, not to uh, uh, you know uh, put pictures uh, on on media and uh, so on. Um, so, so so this has to be really um, very critical. Um, it happens a lot. Um, I would say that. Uh, it's it's portrayed a bit in a poor manner usually that is uh, not really reflective of the truth uh, talking about mental health or suicide uh, in Lebanon. So you, we usually, uh, I think usually it is done because of uh, the lack of awareness ever so, or unfortunately sometimes uh, with the intention of attracting more viewers maybe. So we do see that in you know, national or international series or movies, uh, or sometimes even, uh, which is sadder, while uh, reporting uh, an actual uh, you know, suicide case uh, in the news. So it is important to provide accurate facts about uh, mental health and suicide. And that would be done by, you know, asking the right people and professionals to address this topic in a very objective manner, having uh, the intention, the only intention, that, uh, to, of, of, you know, spreading awareness and fighting the stigma again and guiding people to know where, when and how to seek uh, the help they need. Exactly. Just using every opportunity of informing as an opportunity to also maybe extend help. I know that we as a, as a publication have made it a point every time there is a horrible uh, story or something like this that arises, we make it a point to tack on the um, Embraces hotline to give people that olive branch, for lack of better word. To maybe reach that 1% of people who are reading it, maybe with a glimmer of hope of, uh, of wanting to connect with somebody or wanting a solution. So tacking on a solution is very important. Normalizing the conversation surrounding mental health and depression are extremely missing in Lebanese um, media, in my opinion. Yes, exactly. يعني هيك بالعربي توضيح الفكرة المهم إنه النية وقت نكون عم نحكي عن عن mental health أو أو specifically أكثر عن suicide بس عم نخبر قصة النية ما تكون نكون عم نعمل attracting هيك viewers النية نحن الأساسية تكون إنه again spreading awareness نخبر العالم عن الأرقام المضبوطة etc. And the help they need uh, if needed. I wanted to talk, Shrey, about the 
numbers that El uh, Masbuta, yelli hinne, uh, are related to suicide in Lebanon. Yeah. Lebanon, we don't have a census. We don't have these basic uh, kind of reporting and, and data. I'm wondering why we don't have an accurate depiction of suicide rates in Lebanon. Uh, I mean studies and studies show that every 2.5 days uh, so every 2.5 days and uh, 2.5 days every six hours okay بس كمان نعرف انه مضبوطين because uh, مثل ما قلت uh, uh, غير uh, because of, you know, uh, social uh, issues, maybe الدين, etc., and the stigma, uh, العالم reports that الشخص يلي they lost and died by suicide. So, so هول الأرقام يلي نحن منجيبون منجيبون من كوى الأمن داخلي. So هول إذا بديك يلي مقيدين إذا يلي reported. Uh, but there are a lot others that are actually underreported because of the stigma, because of uh, what society is going to say. Uh, mostly because came in, uh, people assume that if someone died by suicide, then they're weak and then that might shame the family, uh, which we all know is not uh, particularly true. Well, I think all the discussion via ترجع لقصة الأويرنس إنه understanding mental health issues as not weaknesses and not uh, flaws that people have but just everyday occurrences يعني في ناس عندهم ضغط وفي ناس عندهم بصير عندهم migraines or other people have anxiety other people have depression it's um, normalizing it to this degree would make people kind of think twice about why am I ashamed of this you know what I mean Exactly. So now we say if if someone's hand is broken, they would go to a, to a doctor to fix it. But uh, if something else is going on internal, uh, we tend to build a wall and uh, not uh, take care of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I want to shift slightly to a different note about uh, just depiction in media. Very briefly, if you guys have any input on this. I'm recently on TikTok and it's a um, kind of younger crowd, I would say, and it's uh, a very different generation than, than mine is, one that's very creative and brilliant and etc. but also one that is, uh, that is very vocal about mental health struggles. So I think there's heightened awareness about anxiety disorders, depression, which is really positive. But at the same time, I, I would kind of sense a little bit of romanticizing suicide. I would sense this kind of في استلشة ب ب بموضوع الانتحار نحكي عنه كأنه شيء كتير everyone is going through. But uh, at the same time, it's something so horrific. Do you do you have any opinions on that? Okay, so أولا as a as a the younger generation على TikTok يا لا I'm not sure لا no mom is على TikTok قبل yeah so that's one two um, again يعني يعني مثل ما قلنا قبل شوي لما I would I wouldn't say uh, uh, really uh, romanticized I'm not I'm not sure really بس يستخفوا بالموضوع Again, يعني مثل ما قلنا, we don't want to be uh, uh, judging. We don't want to be. ما بعرف إذا عم تحكي عن عن whoever is posting anything about that. ما راح نكون عم عم we're judging. We just want to say that maybe that's another way of you know uh, seeking help. Is a she. هلا an interesting thing uh, to know is that and based on it, uh, uh, مثل. Collaboration, collaboration with, here TikTok. With, me, with TikTok, where where uh, you know, is a is a can be suicide uh, ideas or anything related to that that TikTok can 
um, sensor. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, uh, they would get uh, some some sort of notification, you know, to uh, call the lifeline. So so. Yeah, just to reinforce guidelines and policies in order to ensure the users or you know, TikTok users' uh, safety against suicide and uh, self harm uh, on the platform. Okay, that's that's an interesting activation. So you guys launched that with TikTok Arabia. Yes. yes. Okay, that's really interesting. I don't think I don't think I had heard of that before. So, as always, you guys are doing amazing work. But I'm wondering what keeps the Embrace team going. It's such a horrific time in Lebanon. We're all dragging our feet or trying not to drag our feet. But what what keeps the team going? Yes, definitely. Uh, I wouldn't say we are a team. <laughs> we are more of a family here at uh, at Embrace. And uh, the support we receive from each other is actually... Are you just saying that because Christine is there? No. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. The, the support we receive from each other is what uh, keeps us going, uh, along with the heart warmth that we feel every time someone thanks us for for listening to them. Uh, it is very moving, actually, to, to see people come into the center, but not because they want to do their job, because they are passionate about uh, what they do, which is uh, helping others. And, uh, you know, with, uh, with everything that is uh, going on in the country, uh, it is with no doubt that it's uh, difficult for, for anyone to, to stay uh, motivated until my and we're dragging our feet. But uh, our supervisors offer us a very safe space to communicate this um, through group support and, uh, and other activities that uh, keep us going. Now, that is because I am <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm sure. Honestly, like, it, it, because I do know another volunteer and that is how they describe it. So, um, Mira, I'm going to ask, though, when you yeah. told your parents that or shared with your friends or shared with your family or loved ones that you were going to be volunteering uh, for this lifeline, I'll tell you, for example, something my mother did when I was very, I was, I was younger and I was volunteering for, uh, for a similar cause, not the same one, but a similar one. Yeah. Yeah. And one that is, that would be branded as heavy. And my mom was like, no, was that the response that you received? Well, I received, uh, different responses, but Actually, if I receive such a response, I would be happy because then I would have the opportunity to uh, spread awareness on Embrace's vision and, and mission. So uh, it is because of the, of the stigma that we might hear such, uh, such answers. But uh, no, uh, I, would, uh, I would go about the issue in a very nice way and uh, uh, just use it as an opportunity. Yes, um, exactly. Can you talk about your most difficult call? Uh, I wouldn't say a call is difficult, per se. Uh, every time the phone rings, there is this uh, sense of responsibility that I feel and uh, actually all operators feel. Um, it comes from this deep-rooted motive of wanting to help the caller as much as we can, regardless of his or her or their story. So, uh, yeah, it's not uh, difficult. It's just uh, a big sense of uh, responsibility. And what's the, what's the follow-up like? So if somebody calls the hotline and um, say they're going through a particularly difficult time, is there, does it turn into like a relationship or is it just a kind of talking somebody down kind of thing? Yeah, uh, it's important to form a certain uh, connection and rapport with the caller. Um, actually, befriending the caller is, is crucial because it offers them or it gives them the sense of safety and uh, a trusting space for them to, to feel appreciated, validated and uh, understood. Uh, otherwise, I don't think uh, anyone would talk uh, about what they're going through. So there has to be the sense of, of uh, connection, the sense of uh, feeling like uh, uh, there's someone there listening. 
Okay. I think I, uh, I covered quite a bit of groundwork. I definitely learned a lot from you both. I am wondering if you guys would like to discuss something in particular or... Uh, well, I think uh, that's it. But I did want to, uh, you know, talking about one thing, uh, actually, Lama, where, where, uh, which is, you know, that idea, especially during these times, uh, access for mental health care is, uh, is considered, you know, luxury. So um, I just want to reinforce uh, and remind people that... Um, it is, it is unfortunately considered a luxury to many in Lebanon, uh, but uh, it definitely shouldn't be, and I want to say why. First, because as we said, so mental health is no less than physical health, and um, there is no health without mental health. I hope we agreed on that. Mm -hmm. and just like any individual, regardless of their socioeconomic background, uh, might struggle with mental health issues at any time uh, uh, in their lives, which, by the way, is one over uh, four people worldwide. That's 25% of people wor worldwide. Um, any, any, any individual, also regardless of their socioeconomic background, should have access to mental health care. Uh, Thank and you so much for bringing that up, actually. I, um, I, I definitely want to talk about this. Obviously, in Lebanon, everybody knows we had a financial crisis. I think therapy to begin with was expensive compared to minimum wage. I think therapy used to run around $100, $150,000. Um, now I have friends of mine who are paying upwards of $300,000 for a 45-minute session. Obviously, this is not accessible to, I would say, the majority of Lebanese people. So alongside the hotline, which I know is um, I know is accessible to, to most or as many people as possible, how does Embrace um, deal with this kind of socioeconomic schism? Exactly, exactly. So, so uh, now we have our Embrace clinics up and running. These clinics... Uh, have uh, two psychiatrists and two psychologists uh, who are seeing clients for free, who are willing to uh, see and help whoever in need for free. The idea is clear. Uh, I just wanted again to reinforce this, to, to, to underline under uh, the idea that, you know, uh, although mental health uh, issues are not directly caused, by socioeconomic stressors. So we are talking about whatever is going uh, around in Lebanon, uh, economically speaking, etc. We're not saying that causes, you know, uh, mental health issues, but it definitely can play a role. And uh, it's a huge uh, factor. exactly, it's a huge factor that can affect uh, one's mental health. Uh, and, and in fact, you know, 75% of suicides occur in low and middle income com income countries, which you know makes people from this back more in need for access to mental health care. So again, when we talk about uh, uh, you know the financial diaconic situation in Lebanon, we're not saying that that is what's causing uh, mental health. We are saying it is a factor. And, and uh, uh, regardless of the background, the socioeconomic background of any individual, that individual uh, should have access to uh, mental health care. Exactly, particularly at a time when every day we wake up and there's less and less medication, vital psychiatric medication at pharmacies, it's going out of stock and, and all of this. So, yeah, it's definitely the socioeconomic problem and the and the the country's problems have definitely exacerbated mental health, but I agree, not caused. How, how can people access the Embrace Clinic? Is it through calling the hotline? They can call the hotline and uh, get the information they need, but also we have a direct uh, line for the clinics, which is... So the number of the clinics is 8100387. 
So that's 81003870. Great, and we'll be sure to list that in the description as well. I want to close the episode out by asking, is Embrace looking for volunteers always? Always, always looking for volunteers. Yes, definitely. you can always check our uh, platforms for upcoming trainings to becoming an operator and the website for other volunteering opportunities. So individuals interested in serving as volunteer uh, helpline operators, you can email info at embracefund.org. They're looking for dedicated individuals. You will undergo uh, trainings to help you um, build this uh, skill set. And uh, for those who would like to become a donor to help keep Embrace's incredible efforts afloat, whether you're in Lebanon or abroad, you can click the link in the description box. We're going to put links there with all the pertinent numbers, all the websites and information that you need. You can help keep their um, hotlines running. You can help keep all their activations running and help them continue spreading their incredible message of mental health, care for all, and equal access. Thank you. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Mira and Christine. You guys have been incredible just shedding light on uh, such an important topic and for all the amazing work that you do. Uh, thank you so, so much for joining me. Thank you, Lama. Thank you for having us, really. Uh, thank you for helping us, uh, again, uh, spread awareness about the topic, as you said. So you guys, everyone follow the links in the description and until next time.